Tucked away in a remote corner of Colorado's expansive San Luis Valley, an abandoned mine and a unique colony of migratory bats are playing an important role in studying a disease that threatens the future of many bat species nationwide. or it can damage its wings to the point where they can't fly. Wildlife biologist and project leader Kurt Navo explains. Uh, the Mexican free-tailed, or sometimes called the Brazilian free-tailed bat, Tiderida brasiliensis, a scientific name. The difference between this colony here in Colorado and those that people have heard of, Bracken Cave, Carlsbad Cavern, is that those colonies are maternity roosts, where females are raising their young. And so and we're talking about tens of thousands to millions of bats all in this one roost. So they're very big colonies. This colony here in the San Luis Valley is unique at the Warrior Mine because it's a bachelor colony composed predominantly of males during the summertime. Typically for this species, the males will disperse out into smaller groups, scatter out across their range. But here, for some reason, they have congregated and they've done this in a few other places, but this is the, the biggest one that we know of. They congregate and they spend the summer here. This is the Orion Mine, and somewhere between the time of when the mine shut down in the 1930s, I believe, uh, the bats discovered it. And in the mid 70s is the first documentation of our awareness that this colony existed here. It was a paper published uh, showing that. So somewhere between those, the bats found this mine and somehow communicated this <laughs> great spot to all these other bats and now they, they stop here every summer. Go up to the actual, to the Orient Mine, what we call the Orient Mine, it's the glory hole and that's a huge open uh, pit. So you can go up there, you'll see different tunnels, added tunnels poking out at different levels. So the idea is, is that we want to know, can this species of bat carry viable fungal spores, both during the springtime and then again in the fall when they're migrating back south into the winter. So our goal is to go up here and we're going to capture bats. We'll swab them to try to collect fungal spores. Uh, and then those are taken back to the laboratory and cultivated to see if we can show that, yeah, we have viable spores here. We'll also be testing to see if the white nose syndrome is here also. To capture the bats, biologists and college students erect a special nylon net called a mist net between poles near the mine opening. Mist nets are virtually invisible to the bats' echo detection. When the bats fly out at dusk to feed on insects in the valley, a few become entangled in the net. Researchers carefully remove them and place them in bags. Other researchers inspect the bats, taking weights and measurements. The bats are held up to a light to identify their sex and to determine their age by skeletal development. The swabs used to collect samples from the bats' bodies and noses are placed in test tubes, and the bats are then released. The samples are then taken to Fort Lewis College in Durango where students and professors run tests to determine if the bats are carrying the fungus that causes white nose syndrome. And to record other data for future reference. The students discover that these Mexican free tail bats carry six types of fungal spores and are capable of transporting the spores in and out of Colorado during their migrations. Fortunately, the fungus that carries white nose syndrome was not discovered in these samples. Through ongoing research and the combined efforts of many dedicated individuals, Colorado Parks and Wildlife is working to protect the future of all bats. Learn more at cpw.state.co.us.